The, the history of um, the last 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, how many organizations do you believe have, have worked with uh, this model, have adopted it? Or? I, I've, I've actually been working with policy governance for 30 years. In 30 fact, years? It's, it's getting close to 35. It goes back before the publication of Boards That Make a Difference, for example. And, uh, and, and in that time, uh, the model has been applied in an unbelievable range of settings. In the United States and Canada, yes, but also in, in Australia and New Zealand and uh, in, in a number of places in Europe, part of, part of Africa and Asia. So the model has had worldwide distribution. Uh, I, some of that I have done personally, or Miriam, my wife, has done personally. Uh, but a lot of it has been done by the people we've, we've trained, the advanced consultant training that we do. So it's like a small army. <laughs> all over like that. They're independent. They don't come back and report to us, but they're independent people. So that has happened, but also the range of types of organizations, equity, for-profit corporations, nonprofits, the NGOs, uh, governmental, like city councils, school boards, uh, 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 airport authorities, that kind of thing. So we've, we've covered all kinds of organizations like that. And uh, I must admit that they are all so so similar, it's unbelievable. When you get to the basics of, of governance, not the stuff on the top, not a city council will obviously have a different kind of set of decisions to make than a third world relief organization or the, or the, or the board of a nuclear power plant. Or the, all of these we've worked with, by the way. Uh, but the basics are the same. And one of the problems, though, with policy governance, I think it's the biggest problem, is it requires discipline. It requires board members to be as disciplined in the board process as their staffs already are in the management process, or as those board members are in their other jobs. And boards are not accustomed to being that disciplined. They're accustomed to being sort of like freewheeling organizations uh, or disciplined to the wrong discipline, for example, like managers one step removed. Uh, so we've the, 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 uh, the history then of what has happened with organizations is a mixed history. Uh, those that stuck with the model very carefully have found that it has saved them huge amounts of problems that have come up when, when, you know, when an organization hits bumps in the road. They better have their act together. And we've had many organizations tell us that that, that, that has gotten them through the crises. Um, and we've also had many that let it, let it fall apart. I mean, it's, 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 it, governance doesn't stay fixed any more than the dishes stay washed or the bed stays made. I mean, it, it doesn't. It takes constant work, just like management does. Mm -hmm. uh, so the model re asks a lot of boards. It produces a lot, too, but it does ask a lot, and that asking isn't always met. Um. In 2001, you asked the question, is translation of the wishes of owners into organizational perform performance uh, not the heart of servant leadership? Uh, what do you see as the essential heart or core of servant leadership from your pr perspective? I, I see the, the very central part of servant leadership as, well, actually, that's a question that Bob Greenleaf ought to answer, not me. All right, and I do not claim to be a, an expert in servant leadership. I simply don't make that claim. But, but if I try to, 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 to pin down what I think is the central core, to me, servant leadership is, it is a fine-tuning of the golden rule. It's the golden rule fine-tuned uh, in terms of, of certain kinds of, certain aspects of relationships. Uh, and that, to me, is, is what it's all about. Um, it translates then into policy governance largely in the way that boards look at their roles as servants of an ownership. So I'll bring the ownership concept and policy governance back into this. Uh, now, they, they are servants of the ownership, but the servanthood that they're being asked to, to display is the servanthood of leading that which the ownership owns, of leading that school system, leading that city government, leading that petroleum company, and so forth. So for me, the, the, the central core simply goes back to the golden rule. It's a trusteeship. 
Are there other ways in which you see servant leadership and policy governance uh, either intersecting or ways in which they may uh, reinforce one another? There's another way in which, it, in which the servant leadership and policy governance intersect, uh, and, and that has to do with the way the board deals with those who report to the board. That is how they deal with management staff, and I'm using management to mean all the staff, uh, how the board deals with, for example, a CEO. Uh, the, the, <clears throat> the intention uh, in policy governance is to balance the need for rigorous accountability and the need to give people as much room as possible to move, to stand behind, to in sense, to, 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 to stand behind the exercise of human creativity uh, and, and individuality and still get the right production out of the whole system. And, and that's hard to balance. Boards have typically have a tremendously hard time to do that and they'll fall off into, into getting involved with the staff in a micromanagement way or they'll fall off the other direction uh, in terms of just letting things go, uh, the rubber stamping kind of board. So, so that, to me, the board sets up a situation in which people can be all they can be without forgetting that they're not there just to do their own thing. They're there to serve something else. So in that sense, I see another, uh, maybe that's strained a little bit, but a, a way in which servant leadership gets, its way, it's, it gets itself expressed in the delegation system. Control all you must, not all you can. 